being our speaker uh, here, the last speaker of the uh, workshop today. And um, thanks everyone who is here for being here. So Tiep is gonna talk to us about rationality properties of complex characters of finite groups. Take away. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation to speak. Um, so, oh yeah, right. So it seemed that, let me see why I, I cannot click on it. Okay, okay, so yeah. So maybe I cannot use the, my pointer. So, so let's see whether I can use a, my pointer. Um, so I'd like to talk about the character values uh, of complex characters. So uh, let's read be a finite group and suppose they have a finite dimension, maybe illusion representation, say phi from G into G and NC uh, from, uh, into the group of matrices. Then you have the corresponding character chi, which send any element to the trace of the uh, matrix phi of G. Well, uh, one thing that you can, uh, we can try to study is we would like to study the analytical behavior of chi of G. So we like to know how does the um, absolute value of chi of G compared to the to the chi of one. Of course, chi of one is the office upper bound, and you know that uh, the absolute value of chi of G is at most chi of one. So we can look at the uh, character ratio, or some people call this the normalized character, which is chi G over chi of one, and you can try to bound it. Uh, you can also try to do it in another way, which is more uh, useful for a lot of application, which is like, a, so how do you, like, a, how do you compare the absolute value of chi of G to something like a chi of one to some uh, small power? And uh, there have been a lot of papers uh, on this uh, problem. And recently, during the last couple of months, there have been some very exciting development, which lead to progress on uh, seven uh, problems, but uh, that'd be uh, like a, a story for another time. So today I would like to talk about the algebraic or rather rationality properties of character values. So uh, most of the uh, re results that I'm going to talk about today are based on joint papers with Gavin Navarro. So um, like I said, we are going to study the, uh, the fin Q of chi, which is a fin uh, obtained from Q by joining on the chi of G for on the, on the element G in the group. So this is the fin value of character chi. Now, being influenced by my collaborator, Gabriel Navarro, I'm going to use the, uh, the kind of like peculiar notation Q sub N, which is the N cyclotomic uh, extension. So you can see that this is QP, the, uh, the black, what is the blackboard QP and the, and the other one, the bone face QP, they are not the same. One of them is the P cyclotomic extension and the other one is uh, the periodic fin. But in any event, you see that Q of chi is gonna be contained in the, uh, the G, the order of G cyclotomic extension of Q. Okay, so if you come from uh, number theory, then maybe you can ask the following question. So we have to know which finite abelian extension F of Q can occur like Q chi for some finite group G and for some character chi. Um, so we want to solve the equation Q chi equal to F. And it seemed to be uh, an easy question. So here's a theorem that Gabriel and I proved. So if you take M to be any integer and F, any subfin of Q sub M, then you can find a solar group G of, well, of order M times the degree of QM over F uh, that has a character chi of degree and using the character chi of of degree Q, uh, QM over F, such that the fin of value of chi is exactly the fin F. So the proof is uh, basically the, uh, the Clifford theory. Um, so it looked like a problem solved, right? Okay. Um, but not quite, because um, uh, let me mention the following problem, which was raised by Fine and Gordon in 1972, which is thin open, even for solar groups. So the problem is the following. So we have to know which uh, finite IBM extension F of Q uh, can occur like QG. So it's the QG. So QG is the, um, uh, QG is the, um, is the thing that you adjoin all the character values for all the element and for all the uh, complex characters of, of your group G, okay? And it looked like a, 
kind of an innocent question, but it's, uh, it's not an easy question. And even like, if you think about it, uh, we don't even know which quadratic extension can occur in this way. Um, of course, we talk about the quadratic extension. So we may as well look at the smallest case where the QG is Q, so they mean that G is a Russian group. So they mean that every complex character of your group take only Russian values or integer values if you like. And of course you do have uh, obvious examples like uh, symmetric groups or one groups. More example, well, in fact, there's a theorem which is due to uh, one to five and great size from 1998 and John Thompson from 2008. Uh, and they show the following. So if you take a finite Russian group, then the uh, composition factors of your G are either non-abelian or abelian, right? And if it's non-abelian, then you can see AN, um, PSP43, SP62, omega plus eight of two. So you can see that AN, of course, is in the Van Gogh type ABCD. The next one, PSP43, is the Van Gogh type E6. Then you have the E7, and then you have E8. But then you have some other ones, which is PSN34, PSU43. PSU Okay, and this is the only one, non-abelian one. Now for the abelian one, then uh, uh, John Thompson proved that uh, you can have only the acidic group of order between two and 11. And he even conjectured that, uh, uh, that, the, um, that actually your P should be only two, three or five. And, and it's still an open problem until now. Now in the 70s, Rodgau proved that the, uh, uh, the Thompson conjecture is true if you, if you talk only about the Solomon groups, so Solomon Russian groups. Anyway, so now let me fix some notation. So P is a prime and chi is a character of a finite group G. So uh, we say that chi is P rational or unramified above P if uh, the uh, Q chi is contained in an N cyclodomic extension QN where your N is co-prime to P. And then you can talk about the conductor of chi, which is a conductor of the uh, uh, Q chi that is the smallest integer m such that the q chi contained in the m cyclotomic, cyclotomic extension. Uh, now, before leaving the, uh, uh, the, uh, the one of the solar groups, let me mention another result that Gabriel and I proved. So suppose that f is a finite abelian extension and suppose that the conductor of f is odd, then you can find a group G of odd order and an innocent character chi of G such that the Q chi is the fin F, if and only if the extension QN over F has odd degree. So N it is conductor. So, okay. So you see that this, there are a lot of oddnesses in this uh, statement. Okay, so now uh, uh, let me mention what you can say about um, the uh, uh, the uh, the finite values for finite connected reductive groups. Um, so by a finite connected reductive group in Cartesian P, we mean the group uh, script G upper F, where script G is a connected reductive group in Cartesian P, and F is a, a generalized Frobenius or maybe Steinberg endomorphism. And we have to say that this P is almost good for this group G if, well, if the uh, script G prime has an E8 component, then you want P to be not equal to two or five. Uh, if your skip G prime has an F4, E7, C1 component, then you want P to be uh, odd. And also we don't want to see any uh, composition factor, which is a Suzuki group. Um, so with this definition, then uh, we can have the following result, which is due to Alex Zaleski and myself. So if G is a finite connected reductive group, and suppose that P is an almost good prime for your G, now let's take the K to be the uh, cyclotomic extension Q, the P prime part of the order of G. Okay, then we can show that every complex representation of G can be written over this fin K if your P is two, and if your P is odd, then you have to adjoin the square root of P. So in particular, uh, the fin Q chi is going to be contained in, in K. In this fin K, if your P is even, it's P2 and it's contained in the uh, quadratic extension of K by square root P. 
if you please odd. Okay. Um, so let me mention right away that the uh, this almost goodness condition cannot be removed because if you look at the Suzuki group, then you can see that uh, you have to to allow i square root of negative one to be among the other values. If you look at the uh, group of type E8 over the fin of five to the f element, then you can see that uh, the k with the square root of five is not enough, and you have to take the k but adjoined by the uh, fifth root of unity. So a quadratic extension of k is not enough, but you have to take a quartic extension. Um, so in fact, for the proof of the theorem, what we prove is the following. Uh, we prove that if P is almost a good prime, and you have some element written G in our group, which has all the P to the A time M, when your P is co prime to M, then any character value of G uh, is contained in the, uh, in the um, uh, extension of, uh, in, in the ring Z extended by the M root of unity, and the other one, which is the, uh, the standard thing, one plus square root negative one to P minus one over two uh, times P over two. So this is the, uh, the real extension in the P sectoric extension. So this result due to George Lustig and Milan Gek, if you assume that P is a uh, large, I think it's larger than the cost, uh, cost number. And that is and I, we prove it for, for any almost good prime. So, uh, so uh, briefly, uh, the proof rely on the following. So we, we prove that if you take any inupotent element in our group G, and if you take any semi simple element S, which centralize this U, then the element U is gonna be half rational in this centralizer of S. Meaning that if you look at all the generators of the series group generated by U, then they fall into at most two conjugate classes in this centralizer. Um, but we don't like the fact that you have to allow this quadratic extension over, over k. We would prefer your chi to be p Russian. So they mean that q chi should be contained in your k. And the reason is uh, for this is coming from the, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm ex explaining the motivation why you want to have this p rationality. But first, let me, let me show you. So for which finite reactive groups, we know that every, Character is P rational. So let G be a, a finite connected type group in uh, characteristic P. And I'm going to assume that G, G is not small, so it's non solvable. Then all the complex representation of G can be realized over this P rational extension K if at least one of the following condition holds. So the first one is like your G is defined over FQ, where Q is a square. And your P is a good prime for all the seven component of accession type of your G prime, of your script G prime. So if your key is square, then you just need the good prime for only for the accession uh, composition factor. Now, if you go, if you look at the uh, class and group, then you have a lot of them which have this property. You can have the GL or GU. So I use the GN epsilon N for, uh, as a notation for GN, if you have epsilon N plus and uh, for GU, if the epsilon is minus. For GL, for, SL, for SLN, where the um, dimension is uh, odd. For the even one, then you have the condition that uh, you can look at the SL epsilon two and Q, where they have the condition that N divided by uh, the um, GCD of two and Q minus epsilon is an integer. You can look at the conformance simulated group, the uh, special orthogonal group, the uh, conformance spin group where your Q is odd. Uh, so those, they have the connected center, but then you can also have the stability group or the omega plus or minus n Q, your Q is even, so it should be omega two n. You can also look at the spin group where your Q is odd and you have the condition depending on the type of your, of your group, which is like uh, the type epsilon should be like native epsilon should be equal to minus one times n times Q minus one over two. And you can have the spin eight, spin nine, and the uh, spin timer group. For the exception group, then you can take G2, E6, or twist E6 when your P is not three, and you can take F4 if your P is not two and three.
So now let me explain why, why do you want to have this condition on the P rationality? So, so suppose that UG is non solvent finite kinetic relative group and with no simple component of type A1. Suppose that your chi is a complex character which is P ration with solvable kernel. Then a reduction mode P of chi is going to be absolutely irreducible if and only if your chi is a standard character of G up to a linear character. Of course, the reduction mode P of standard character is uh, irreducible. And the work is to show that the converse is true. Um, if you work with a group over prime fin, then you can have a stronger conclusion. So suppose that uh, script G is similar to the group in characteristic P larger than three. And suppose the G is the, uh, the, F, the group of the FP point of your script G and G is not G2 five. And suppose that theta is an absolutely useful KG representation. And suppose that the uh, reduction mode P of theta contain an irreducible direct summon of the matter larger than one. Then either theta is a P diffic zero, in which case you know that this is just the standard character, I mean standard representation, tensor with some linear representation, one dimension linear representation, or otherwise your G is S and two P and the dimension of the theta is P minus one. Um, so let me mention just a key step in the, in the proof of this theorem. So the key point is that if you look at the direction mode P of a, a P rational representation, then if you look at any element U about a P, then the drawn can only conform with this element acting on this representation has only drawn blocks of size one, PS one or P only. Of course, if you P three then or two, then this doesn't tell you anything, but your P is five or higher, then this gives you the key con condition for us to work with. Um, now, I should also mention that the P rationality is really needed in this uh, theorem, because if you look at the weight representation of the P then plus one or minus one over two of SP 20, then they are both reducing modulo P. Uh, aside from the interest in the moral representation theory, so our motivation, another motivation that you had was because of a problem that uh, Benny Gross asked. So he asked for which final group G and for which uh, complex character chi of G, chi mod P is gonna be irreducible for all the prime P. Now, uh, if you look at the, uh, the uh, weight representation of P then plus one over two, then it's irreducible the modulo any prime except for the prime two. But if you look at the smaller one, of degree P then minus one over two, then it's irreducible modulo any prime. Um, this is a, a certain example for any P. And let me mention maybe three more examples. One is the, uh, the root uh, lattice of type E8. And you look at the group of automorphism of that lattice. The next one is the leash lattice, where you have the double cover of the Conway one group. And one more is the example of the Thomson's right group when you have a representation of degree 248, the one that uh, John Thompson used to construct his Savoy Simon rule. Um, okay. Uh, in fact, there are also some examples which uh, use the uh, basic spin representation of the double cover of alternating groups. But the problem that, uh, that I would like to mention is, which is somewhat in the opposite direction. So, so far we look at the representation which are irreducible mode P, uh, so here's, a, here's another question. So suppose that you have a simple group of lead type in characteristic P larger than three. So is it true that we can always find a character chi of G, not the time of character, such that the um, B sub chi comma one is zero. So it means that this is the decomposition number. We look at the multiplicity of the given common factor in the reaction mode P of this character chi. So it looks like a, an easy question for us to answer because like you have so many representations of our, uh, let's say SNNQ, Q of power P, and we just want to have one character, a single character, single character with this uh, equality. So why do you want to look at this question? Um, so it turns out that the, it seems that the, if you look at all these 
uh, decomposition numbers e chi one. So just for the uh, for the chief and brow character, it's, they seem to tell a lot about the structure of G. So here's a conjecture that uh, Gabriel and I have. So let G be a finite group, P a prime, not two or three, and the big P is the zero P subgroup of G. So the conjecture, the conjecture is that if B is a prison P block of G, then D chi one is not zero for own chi in this, uh, for own the character chi in this block B, if and only if uh, G has a normal P complement. So the mean that G is a semi product of K with the P, with the COP subgroup. And there's a low conversion of this conjecture, which is if D chi comma one is not zero for all the chi in this set, here P prime of G. So this is a notation for the setup on the common character of G, which are between equal prime to P. Then this uh, non-vanishing is equivalent to P being semi-normalized, uh, semi-normalizing. So they mean the normalizer P in G is equal to P. Now, um, let me, uh, let me mention a few reasons about this conjecture, uh, or rather about these two conjectures. So the if direction is proof for both of the conjectures. And in fact, the, uh, the if direction for the, uh, the conjecture B for p sonal group was only proved by Jonathan Amperin. Both conjectures hold if you know that your G is sonable or you will be cyclic. And you see that I have to exclude two and three because of two, you can look at the Matthew group M22 uh, for one conjecture, A5 for the other conjecture. For P to three, then you look at the regroup over the fin of 27 element and it showed that A and B uh, uh, fell equal P3. Okay. So the main result that you have on these uh, two conjectures is the following. So the the conjecture A hold for, for every finite group, if it hold for the every Simon group of D type in the same de defining characteristic P. Similarly, conjecture P hold for, for any finite group G, if it hold for every group G almost simple, where the circle is a Simon group of D type in characteristic P and the quotient of G by S is a P group. So, so basically you see that we reduce the two conjectures to simple group and now for all simple group, you can verify the conjectures except for the group of B type in the same characteristic. So what do you know about uh, this conjecture but for the simple group of B type in the same characteristic? So what you can show is that the uh, conjecture A and B home if S is a simplistic group, a simple and simplistic group. Conjecture A also home for PSL, PSLN, Q, if your N is co-prime to Q minus one over P minus one, and for PSU and Q, if your N is not even by the two part of Q plus one. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know what is going on for other exception, I mean, for other class and group, and especially for the exception group. So for instance, if you look at the E8, Q, can you find a non-standard character where the, where the reaction would be of this character doesn't contain the prison character? And, uh, uh, so, so therefore, what this is what you know right now about a conjecture, a conjecture A and B. Um, so there's a let me skip this uh, result um, related to the P-Russian characters. Uh, um, so now let me talk about the uh, Mackay conjecture. So you can see that the uh, the theorem one point four that I formulated before completely solve the uh, equation Q K equal to F for odd order groups. Of course, if the order of G is odd, then any character of, K of G has odd degree. And uh, somehow the odd degree characters, they are of special interest, which come from the uh, uh, Mackay conjecture of 1972. So the conjecture say that if G is finite group and P is sealed to subgroup of G, then G and the normalizer P in G have the same number of errors and characters of two prime degree. Now I write two prime instead of odd because in fact, you can formulate this conjecture for any prime. So we just replace the two by P. 
Of course, for P control two, then you know that this is a theorem due to the uh, uh, paper of uh, Guntermaler and Rita Speck in 2016. Okay, so let's look at the character of R degree. Now, if you try to browse Atlas or play with Gap, then you can see that you see a lot of R degree characters, Kai, with the film characters like Q root of negative three or Q root of five, but you, you never see something like Q root of two, root of negative two, or Q root of three, or Q root of negative five. Why that? Uh, so first, we thought that this is like a, something to do with number theory, but you couldn't find any number theoretical um, resolution of this question. So, so we got to work on it, and with uh, so this is a theorem that we proved with Martin Eidegs, uh, Martin Liebeck, and Gabriel. So we proved the following. So if a G is finite group and a chi is any complex character of odd degree and uh, D is uh, a square free integer larger than one. So we show that if your Q chi is a Q square root of D, then D is kind of one to one mode four. And similarly, if Q chi is Q square root of negative D, D is positive, then D is kind of one to three mode four. If you look at this result, then you, 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 you realize that it must have something, something to do with the two rationality because on this field, they are two rational, right? Um, so to prove this result, we need another theorem, which is due to, uh, in one part due to Gabriel and I, I and me and the other part due to Gunther Mahler. So we prove the following. If G is finite group and P is zero to subgroup of G, then the exponent of P mod P prime is at most two. This means the quotient of P by P prime is elementary abelian. Uh, this can happen exactly when all the odd degree errors and character of G are too rational. So, so in fact, what you prove for the theorem 3.2 is the following theorem 3.4. Uh, so you want to show that if have an odd degree character chi, then either your chi is too rational or the otherwise you must see the i. So the negative, the square root of negative one should be among the character values. And the way you prove this theorem 3.4 is that we use the classification to find Sieben group and then you reduce this to Sieben group using the Clifford theory and a various extension result. So let me just mention one of those extension result that you use. So suppose that, so this is lemma 3.5, suppose the G is finite and adds the normal subgroup of odd index. And suppose that for the normal subgroup N, you have a character theta, which is too rational. Then you can show that every character chi of our group G, which lies above this theta is too rational. Now with that, and using the Clifford theory, you can reduce the theorem 3.4 further to theorem 3.6, which is about the representation of finite quasi simple group. So we want to show the following. So if your G is finite quasi simple, and suppose that chi is a character of odd degree, but not too rational, then you can find a two element G in the group so that the I, the root of negative one, belong to the, the fin Q created by chi of g. So how do you prove this theorem? Well, um, so if you use the theorem of 3.3, uh, then you can see that because if you assume that chi is not too Russian, then it means that the exponent of p mod p prime should be at least four. And using that, then you can show that uh, you just need to work with uh, g, which is the SL and q, or su and q, or e6, or q is e6 when you is odd. Of course, for those groups, then you have the, uh, the Lucic theory, you have the Lucic classification of illusion character of G, and, but then it's been a lot of hard work to be done to prove this term 3.6. Okay, so, uh, so let me recap to the term 3.2 say that if your chi is of odd degree and uh, the Q chi is a quadratic extension, then D should be either negative one or kind of one to one mode four. But this is only in one direction. It is true that every such 
quantity X sign to occur. For instance, what happens if you take D to be negative 35 or 65? And again, it, it looks like the like elementary group theory or number theory um, doesn't suffice to solve this question. For instance, if you try to look at the solar group only, then you can see that the only quantity extension that you can see for the characters of odd degree are the obvious one, which is the uh, QI or Q root of negative P, where your P is current to three mod four. And for those quantity extension, then you can uh, easily real realize them using the, let's say, a vein character of P minus one over two of PS and two P, or you can look at the restriction of that character to a Brian subgroup, and they, they give you the fin Q root of negative P. Um, so for, so for some time, we thought that uh, maybe uh, it cannot cover all the quadratic extension, but, uh, but in fact, we can do it. So first, let me give you one converse theorem. So suppose that P is any prime and F is infinite abelian and P Russian extended Q, then you can find a final group G and the character chi of G of P prime degree such that the Q chi is exactly F. So we're okay in the case of P Russian extension. And let me just mention that the, the proof use uh, the uh, UTC semi simple character of GLN over the fin of P to the M when you choose uh, some suitable power P. But what about the non P Russian extension? Well, so here's the key theorem, the key convert theorem that we prove. Suppose that F is a finite abelian extension of Q with conductor two to the A times M while your M is odd. And suppose that uh, the app contains the entire two to the cyclotropic extension of Q. Then you can find a final group G and the character chi of odd degree such that the Q chi is actually F. Um, so here's the idea of the proof. So first, we use the theorem 3.8, the uh, uh, that I formulated above, which P equal to two. Then you go up to some cyclic extension E of F. And then from E, you descend to the desired fin F by some risk product construction. Okay. So if you use, you use the uh, 3.9, and, and then you realize, like I said before, that if your D is convert to one mode four, is square free, then, then yeah, maybe the square free is, uh, I don't need it. But anyway, then you can see the Q square root of D, this quadratic extension has odd conductor. And therefore we got the following uh, corollary that if you D square free, then the Q square root of D occurs at Q chi for some odd degree using the character of some final group G, if and only if your D is negative one or D is kind of went to one mode four. So we completely understood the, the quadratic irrationalities of characters of odd degree. What about the higher irrationalities? So let's try to generalize the theorem 3.4. And what you have is the following theorem that if your chi has odd degree and it has conductor two to the eight times m and your m is odd, then, then you claim that the, the q chi contain the, the q sub two to the a. So the two to the a cyclotomic extension. Now you see that if you take A to be two or well, So for instance, if A is larger than one, then it means that your chi is not too Russian. And therefore the previous theorem 3.4 say that you have, to you have to have the I in there. But here you have to, sh to show that if the conductor is two to the A times M, then it contains exactly the Q sub two to the A. Uh, and if you can prove the theorem 3.11, then to the 3.9, then you can understand all the higher irrational, irrationalities for the classes of odd degree. So here's the, here's the consequence. Suppose that you have a finite abelian extension of Q with conductor two to the eight times M when your M is odd. Then you can find a finite group G and a character chi of odd degree such that F is Q chi if and only if when your F contain the, the Q sub two to the A. Um, so now let's talk about the proof of the theorem 3.11. Uh, 
Um, for that, I have to look at some special automorphism of Q abelian. So if E is, a, is an integer and P is a prime, then let's look at the sigma sub P, which is the automorphism that fixes every P prime root of unity and send every P power root of unity to the one plus P to the E power of psi. Now, we can use the Clifford theory and SRN lemmas to reduce the term 3.11 to the following theorem about the quasi sieben group. So if E is an integer at these two and G is a finite quasi sieben group, and suppose that you have a cut psi of odd degree of G, which is not fixed by this sigma two comma E, by this special automorphism, then there is a two element G in, the, in our group G, such that the psi G is not contained in this cyclodomic extension Q sub two to the E. And I'd like to emphasize that if you, if you remove the condition that your G is two element, then it's not, then of course you can, you can do it easily, but the key thing is that you have to find this two element G. And only that can make the uh, reduction work. Okay. And again, like in the case of 3.4, uh, 3 uh, now we need a higher analog of theorem 3.3, which is due to Gabriel and myself for one part and due to Gunther Mahler for the other part. So you want to show that for the zero P subgroup of G, zero two subgroup P of G, then the exponent of P by P prime is at most two to the E, if and only if all the odd degree illusion character of G are fixed by this sigma sub two comma E. Okay. Um, so now with that, then you can prove the theorem 3.13. So first of all, we know that we, because our sign is not fixed by the sigma two comma E, so therefore the exponent P mod P prime is, is big, like at least two to the E plus one, and therefore, is enough to work with the uh, special linear group, special unitary group, or the group of type E6, twisted or untwisted over the field of odd characteristic. And then again, we use the Lucy classification and we work with the characters. So I'm going to skip this technical part. And you can see that so far we have been talking about the characters of odd degree. So what is the special thing about the prime two, right? We should do it for any prime. So what can you say about the, the uh, phenol values Q chi for any P prime degree using character chi? Um, so it took us some time to realize what is the, what is the um, correct formulation that you can have for the phenol odd prime P. And here's a conjecture that uh, Gabriel and I uh, formulated. So suppose that P is an odd prime and F is an abelian extension of Q with conductor P to the A times M where P is program to P. Then you can find a, a final group G and a P prime degree character chi of G such that your F is the, the fin Q chi if and only if your P is co prime to the degree of, of QPA over the intersection of F with QP to the A. If you take your P to B2, then of course the degree of Q to the Q sub two to the A is a uh, two power. So it means that you require the intersection to be the entire thing Q to the two to the A, and it means that you have Q to the Q sub two to the A contained in your F, like we had in the previous result. Okay. Um, so what do you know about this conjecture? Well, first you can show that the the E direction of the conjecture four point one is true for all the final group G. And the proof to, is to use the convert theorem 3.8 and various uh, risk product construction. So the, uh, the harder question is about the only direction. Well, so again, we reduce it to the simple group and we can show that the only direction of the, this conjecture 4.1 uh, is true for all the final group G if another conjecture 4.4 below hold for on the G where the G mode, the center of G is a finite similar group of Lie type, but now in any cross 
characteristic. So what is 4.4? So the category 4.4 say that TBG is a finite quasi Sieben group and P is an odd prime. And suppose that you have a character chi of G, a P prime degree, which conduct a P to the A time M, where P is covalent to M. Then you can you want to have a P element G, little g in a group, such that the degree of the of Q sub P to the A over the Q, the fin Q of chi of G is covalent to P. And and we we have proved this uh, conjecture for only for only quasi simple group, but except for the one that that the quotient by the center is uh, is a cross characteristic group of Lie type. So the challenge is to prove this conjecture four point four for for those group. Okay. Um. So. Um. So let's go back to Mackay. So. We know that the uh, Mackay conjecture remain open for, for on the odd prime, even though it has been reduced to a sim to simple group by the uh, uh, theorem of uh, Marty Isaac, Wunderman, and Gabriel Navarro. The uh, blockwise version of this conjecture, the Ampli Mackay conjecture, is also open, even though it has been reduced to a simple group by Brita. Now, there have been a lot of different refinements of Mackay conjecture. And probably one of the most important one being the Gala Mackay conjecture proposed by Gavin Navarro. So, so Mackay conjecture say that you should have a bijection between the P prime degree character of G and the P prime degree characters of the normalizer P in G. So Gavin say that you should be able to find such a bijection star such that it commute with the action of certain Gala automorphism of the Q abelian, like the sigma. Be that I mentioned before. Um, so there is some mysterious connection between this uh, uh, Galo-Mackay conjecture and the result that I mentioned before, because some of the uh, results that I mentioned, but not all of them, can be explained by this uh, unproven until now Galo-Mackay conjecture. Um, so following the uh, philosophy of Mackay, let me discuss two further conjectures. Maybe one, that, uh, one of them has uh, quite a lot of evidence and another probably still very speculative. So the first one is the condition of 4.5. We say that if G is a finite group and P is a prime and the big P is a CLP sub of G. And suppose that your chi has P prime degree and write the conductor like P to A times M where P is covalent to M. Then you want to show that P is co prime to the degree of Q sub P to the A over the Q, the fin of Q of the restriction of chi to P to the zero P sub group. It's not easy to understand what the restriction of any erosion character of your G to the zero P sub group of your group. So this is a conjecture that, that you have. And what is the evidence that you have for this conjecture? Well, um, so there's a very recent paper by Marty Isaacs and Gabriel Navarro, which show that the 4.5 home for any P solar group. And if your P is two and G is quite simple, which is probably the most different case for this conjecture, then, or then the conjecture is true by an extension of our theorem 3.13. Or if you have another condition for your G, but let me emphasize that for this conjecture 4.5, unlike the previous conjectures, we don't have a reduction of this conjecture to the, to the simple group or quasi simple group. So, but on the other hand, we know that this 4.5 would be true if your G satisfies the following condition. So this is a condition 4.6, and it's go, like I said, it's take its roots in the Mackay conjecture. So suppose that G is finite group, and P is a prime, and the big P is a zero P sub of G. Uh, so Mackay say that we should have a, a bijection between the P prime degree characters of G and the P prime degree characters of the normalizer P. But we want, we want to say that there's such a bijection star so that the QP, the fin QP of chi over P 
and the film QP of Kai Star will be are the same. Now this QP is exactly the P cyclonic extension. So they mean that the final values of Kai will be as joined by the P root of unity and the and, and the final of of values of Kai Star will be as joined by the P root of unity are the same. And then we have the equality for the periodic fin of chi and chi star for all the periodic characters of chi. So this would be yet another refinement of the Mackay conjecture. And what do you know about this uh, refinement? What well, is condition? Um, so we know that this condition 4.6 Hold if your G has cyclic zero P sub. So we always try to look at the the uh, well, the, um, the the seamless in quote case. If G is sporadic group, then you know this is true. If G is a symmetric group or ontogenic group, then you know it's true for P equal to two and for P odd. Then uh, Eugenio Janelli uh, uh, has really proved this uh, this conjecture. I mean this condition four point six. Then they are saying that if you want to try some conjecture, then first you should try it for, uh, well, for the symmetric group, and then you should try it for G and N cube. And you can do both, then maybe it has some chance to be true. So indeed we try it for P equal to two and Q, so Q is any odd prime power, and you can prove it for G and N Q and G and Q, but it only takes some work uh, to be done. And the next case that you like would be like, well, we'd like to be able to say that UG is a, is a group of B type in the same characteristic, then you can prove this uh, condition 4.6. Um, we can prove something which is similar to that statement. Namely, if you take our G, um, well, the skip G to be simply connected and a group in characteristic B, then we can have an, a regular embedding of skip G into uh, uh, Tinder G. So it's a regular embedding. It means that the, the, uh, the center of this Tinder G is, uh, is uh, connected and the, uh, both the group have the same derived subgroup. And now you take the, the, uh, the, uh, the F fixed point for this uh, Tinder G, and then you can prove the 4.6 for, uh, for this group. So for instance, uh, you can, so, for instance, you can take the GNNQ or GUNQ, or your Q is a power P, or you can take the, um, uh, the, the conformance symmetric group, the conformance spin group, and so on. And then for all those groups, then, or maybe E8, then, then you can prove the, the 4.6. But again, the challenge is what to do for, well, okay. Yeah, what to do with the cross cartesian case. And, and of course, like I said, we don't have any any reduction and and even more. So right now we we have it like a condition because uh, for instance in the uh, well um, if we look at this um, uh, first condition for the bijection star, then if you remove the QP and put it, you put in the Q, then actually it's not true because there is a there's a kind of example due to um, Benjamin Sambale. Okay, so let me stop here. Thank you, Chet, for the very nice talk. Let's thank Chet for his talk. Does anybody have any questions? Um, hi, I have a rather naive question. So it, <clears throat> you describe all these uh, beautiful results about the field uh, of definition of the character just feel generated by the character values, but um, say for complex representations. But um, how does this compare to just the field of definition of, of the representation? Sorry. So, well, you see that, so this is a question about the sure, uh, um, the sure index, right? I mean, so for instance, uh, in, the first, in the first result that I mentioned, when you take the, such a big field K, right? The K or then you can see that the, the, the sure index is one. So if you know that if you, if you take, well, if you, um, then, um, well, okay. So, so then you can realize your representation over this, that field. But, uh, uh, but uh, 
uh, but in general, I mean, like for instance, you can have a lot of uh, uh, characters which take only Russian values, but is that you cannot realize this over the the fin Q. You take the uh, let's say Q8, right? I mean the quaternion group, right? And you can realize this only only when you join something because the true index is two. But um, um, maybe this is a question. Maybe uh, maybe Jay knows because this is uh, and the manual has uh, done a lot, and of course there are also some. Uh, the question about finding the true index of the comics characters is is very important topic, and, and Josh Lustig uh, has written a lot of papers, uh, some papers on it, and the manual has a lot of result on it, and you see that that, and uh, it is a con uh, I think it's this conjecture which say that. Um, uh, the true index is bounded to something, but uh, right now I don't, I don't remember. But for instance, like yeah, if your character has a uh, has um, only Russian values, then you know the true index is at most two. You mean they have to go up at most by two? I think for for finite reductive groups or for I guess simple groups anyway, you kind of you there's a, a conjecture that the sure index is at most two, right? Like, um, so... I, I'm not sure about it. I remember the, the, there were some papers by, or maybe not for the children group, right? There are, there are some papers no, by, for the by so, Turun, right? Yeah, yeah. so it, it is complicated for, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm- I, I don't think, yes. I don't know whether I it, mean, it, well, it's, it's always, I think for SLN, you still have that it's at most two, the sure index, but it's just that uh, what's not true in, the case of SLN, which you might expect, is that the L local shear indices are non-trivial away from the defining prime yeah. for SLN. And you, right. but you would, in general, for groups of Lie type, you would kind of expect that the L local shear indices are tr are trivial. Yeah. And, um, yeah. In like some in some reason work, actually, I can show this that this for symplectic and special orthogonal groups that these L local shear indices will be will be trivial, but it's not true in general. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So what's the, um, this conjecture 4.4 you stated about uh, where you have this, you have to calculate the conductor of the character. Mm -hmm. And so what, What's the real? Is it calculating this conductor? Is this the real difficulty here of for this? Do you need to know exactly? I mean, if you want to know this conductor, do you need to know exactly precisely what the character field of chi is? Well, the 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 content of the conjecture is that the conductor tells you exactly what is the so what what is the irrationalities the the uh, the the p irrationalities okay. So for the so uh, so we, we can prove that I mean if you look at the uh, the um, over the above the prime two right then this is the either it's too rational or the why you you have to put in some some two power root of, of, of unity and what is the one that you have to put in is exactly the is told by the conductor okay so so what what you want to have some serum like this you look at the character table of your group right you look then you know the capital values and then you want and then, then yeah, then, then this is this, uh, and then uh, you 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 can tell what the, so what is the nature of the irrationalities that you see in there. But uh, the the problem is that for for P R then then right now we we don't know what to do and and when, and you can see that this is like yeah okay so you can look at it like like along the line of Mackay and maybe yeah but. Uh, mm, but you have to be careful if you want to form some kind of choice. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Are there any other questions for Tia? Okay, let's thank Tia again for a very nice talk.